Hi everyone, my name is Jason Dirks, and in this video I'm going to show you how to search Plex DI data with uh, Diane. So the first step, of course, is to download and install Diane. Uh, we have this beta version available. Uh, you can find the link to download it uh, on our Plex DI website. Basically, that's just going to take you to Google Drive, where you can download that and install it to your computer. So once you've done that, uh, next thing to do is to have some data to analyze. Um, you can find the data that we use in our Plex DI paper um, in this massive repository. So uh, we have obviously the FASTA files listed and the raw files, and we also have spectral libraries that we generated. Um, you can optionally download this if you wish. Uh, we're about to generate some, I'll show you how to generate some uh, in the next slide from a FASTA. Um, and then the other thing that you'll need to download are the .pipeline files. And this is just gonna make it easier to set up some of the searches. So yeah, so the next step is to make a spectral library. So let's say we have a FASTA file and we don't have a spectral library. Uh, so we're gonna want to make a spectral library from the, one of the FASTAs that we downloaded. Uh, the first, uh, the first uh, thing to do would be to open this libgen.pipeline file that hopefully you downloaded uh, from Massive here. So once you load that in, it's going to populate uh, a few different things. So first thing you might notice is there's now four different sort of setups here. What, if, what would happen if you clicked through some of these, you would see that they each make its own spectral library. It's its own sort of um, independent experiment you can think of. Uh, so in this case, we're looking at generating an MTrack library. So uh, if, if that's what you wish to do, what you could do next or what you should do next is change some of these file paths, uh, specifically the main output, the output library, um, and then add in the FASTA that hopefully you downloaded also um, from Massive or maybe you have your own FASTA that you would like to in Silico Digest and predict a library from. So once you do all three of those things, um, next you'll just want to change uh, or add these uh, commands into the command line here. Uh, the first one of which is uh, a fix mod. Basically you're saying that um, you're going to add this fix modification and track, which has a certain mass, 140 Daltons and change. Um, and because it's a mean reactive, it's going to label and termini and lysines. Um, this other one here, min fr, basically I'm telling it to predict 16 fragments uh, in this case. And of course, this is optional. We definitely don't have to do this to get it to work. Uh, the other thing to make sure to do is uh, make sure that these boxes here are clicked. Um, uh, so this is precursor ion generation. What this is going to do if you click this box is it's going to read in the FASTA that you have. It's going to digest it based on whatever protease, protease you select. Um, and it's going to um, uh, predict what are the spectro, the retention times, and the ion mobilities for each one of these precursors that you uh, uh, generate from your FASTA. So once, once all that's done, uh, it should be ready to run. So you could either click run, um, or if you wish to make all these different libraries yourself, uh, you could go in through all these, uh, change all the, all the file paths, et cetera, and click execute, and what it'll do, it'll do this one first, this one next, this one next, this one next, and then you'll have uh, four of these different libraries. Uh, so let's say you did, let's say you just generated this one single library here by clicking run. Uh, after you know 30 minutes or an hour, whatever it is, uh, you'll have this predicted speclib file. And um, what this is, is um, sort of a condensed version of what a TSV might be. So it's a little bit faster. It's quite a lot faster actually to read in. Uh, so it's you know really convenient to use that predicted that uh, speclib. Um, but you know maybe you're not sure what happened with the library that you made, or maybe you just just want to check. So one way that you could get around doing this is just by converting it to a TSV. And so the question is, how would you do that? Uh, so if you had this library that you just generated, what you would want to do next to convert it to a TSV, just so that you can check if you want. Uh, you could, uh, you should delete everything in this command line, uh, uncheck these boxes, maybe change the file path, 
and uh, add in that predicted.speclib that you just got. And basically it's going to read that in and convert it to a .tsv. And it's going to be output um, whatever in the file path that you put here. And in that case, you could just open it up in Excel or whatever it is you want to check. Great, so let's say you did all that. And now you'd like to search some raw data that you have. So you'll uh, open this searches.pipeline, which is the other pipeline that we have uh, in our massive repository. Um, so let's say you did that. It's going to populate uh, all of this. Um, you'll see all these different uh, sort of experimental setups that we did for searching all the different Plex DI data sets that we have. Uh, so let's just click, if we just clicked on this one, uh, this is all the data that we generated for using what we call a V1 method. So it's just MS1 optimized. Um, so yeah, we just if we just use that as an example, um, next thing we'll want to do, of course, again, is change the file paths. So we'll change the main output uh, we don't have to do anything with the output library because you know we already generated a library. We don't really need to do that anymore. So if we have, the uh, next thing we'll do is we'll read in the spectral library that we just made. We'll add in the FASTA again that we wish to use. Um, and then we'll change the raw file paths as well. So um, if you have your own PlexDI data, you can load that here. Or you can use uh, our PlexDI raw files and make sure that these are unchecked because if you left these checked, it would basically make a library all over again, and you don't uh, need to do that because we, we just made one. Cool, and uh, so the next thing is, uh, let's look at some of these commands and some of these settings that we might wanna change around. Uh, so most notable for Plex DIA is that you wanna have this uh, fixed mod and track. So this is exactly the same line that we had when we generated the library. So we're just saying that there's going to be a fixed mod um, at a certain mass and on n termini and lysines. And then this next one is also really important. So you need to say uh, channels, m tracks, so or you're calling the modification. And then we're going to basically say m track zero has a mass difference of zero Daltons compared to this fixed mod that we have. And m track four has a mass difference of 4.007 Daltons. So what this is going to do, it's going to add four Daltons in change to uh, this uh, base mass. And so this is going to be the mass of m track four and so on for m track eight. The other um, really important modifications or, uh, sorry, uh, commands to have for uh, maybe a Plex DI search if you're doing an MS1 optimized method would be to specify MS1 isotope quant. So what this is going to do is it's going to uh, integrate signal at the first non monoisotopic peak. Um, uh, and then the next one is MS1 subtract. Uh, what this is going to do is it's going to predict what is the kind of carryover uh, in sort of an isotopic envelope of say delta zero kind of bleeding over into delta four. And so each peptide is gonna have a different amount of carryover depending on what the peptide is or what the precursor is. And um, so what this is going to do is it's going to subtract some of that out. The other things that you may or may not want to change um, are the MS2 and MS1 uh, mass error tolerances. So this is in PPM. Uh, this is what we've used here for Plex DIA um, using an MS1 optimized method. And usually uh, a really good bet is to set the scan window to zero. What that's going to do is, um, what the scan window really is, is it's basically, it's you have a precursor um, that has a certain peak height, and then you have a radius of a certain number of scans, and that's what you're specifying here. So if you set scan window to one, it's going to look at what is the peak height, and it's going to um, look at the scan immediately preceding that peak height and immediately after that sort of peak apex. Uh, so if you set it to zero, though, it's going to figure out what is, you know, automatically what is, what is the most optimal scan uh, window to have. And in many cases, setting it to zero is a really good idea. Uh, but in Plex DA, we have some fairly long duty cycles. And so in those cases, you know, it might be beneficial to have a smaller window, which is why we set it to one here. Uh, right, and then like I mentioned, so you'll want to uncheck these uh, boxes and precursor ion generation. And yeah, so when that's all done, 
uh, you can just click run. And what this is going to do is it's going to iteratively search this file and this file and this file and so on and so forth um, from the special library that you fed, fed in. And if you have MBR enabled, what it's going to do is it'll form a spectral library from these searches that you just uh, generated. And then it'll search it with that library that's sort of run specific, run specific across all these different runs. And then your output is going to look something like this. So first pass, what this, what this means if it says first pass is this is before MBR. Um, if it doesn't say first pass, this is after MBR. And so this is really the file that you'll um, probably want to use the most. This, is, this has basically all the information that you would want to use. Um, if you're kind of confused on some of what the some of some of the column names are, uh, I really recommend going to Vadim's GitHub. Um, it's a really good resource for basically everything, Diane. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah, if you have any other questions, uh, please reach out to me or Vadim or uh, Nikolai, and we'll uh, be happy to help you as much as we can. So thank you again. Bye.